through all the phases of the welding, we've had to manage the stresses that are caused by the welding process. And it's surprising how much force, how much stress is generated just through the welding process alone. This is an example of a development plate where we're working on fine-tuning various welding parameters. But what it shows is the change of shape that results from the heating that's part of the welding process. And so it's this change of shape which results from the, the forces caused by the, the, the contraction when the welding cools. They exert a, a force upwards and they pull downwards. And this is a, a 3 8 inch plate. You can see there's quite a bit of force required to deform that. That provides a picture of the stresses that are caused by the welding process. So in this mock-up, this is the, the vessel wall, which we're repairing. And the area of repair is down in this region here. And the corrosion that's led to the, to the uh, degradation is on the backside of the vessel wall here. Forces from the welding itself are transmitted down to the lower vessel seal. So as the weld contracts, it pulls up and pulls down. So that contraction does this, and it exerts a force on the lower vessel seal. And this is what we need to manage. And we need to assure through analysis that the forces applied to the lower vessel seal will not cause the seal to, to open or change shape. And so that's what we're managing through a lot of detailed analysis. So we're modeling the application of the welding on the vessel wall. Each bead that's applied, we calculate the, the forces that result from its heating and cooling. And bead by bead, then we simulate the entire welding process and predict the loads that are applied on the lower vessel seal. We also predict the shape change that results at the end of the welding process. And then we measure that afterwards and use that as input to validate the stress modeling that we're relying on for the engineering analysis to support the repairs. So it takes a long time to prepare for each of the welds. We're into more complicated geometries with more welding operations to, to practice. There's the operation of attaching the plate itself, tack welding and fillet welding that plate into the appropriate location. And then there's the process of performing the weld overlay adjacent to, to this material. Each of those operations needs to be practiced independently and, and there needs to be a proficiency demonstrated. During the course of all the weld development, we also inspect the results. And this is an example of one of the, the plates, a development plate that it's subjected to non-destructive examinations. We x-ray it, we cut it up and section it, and we look for any defects. If we find a defect, then that feeds back into changing the weld parameters, doing more development, leading to more practice. And this is what we're doing right now. So really, in order to go in vessel and perform this welding, it's the end product of more than four weeks of specific development training for the welders which will allow us to return to service once we've completed the last two repairs.